It is one of the first submissions you will learn how to do when starting Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or any other submission grappling art. It is seen all of the time in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, mixed martial arts, Judo, and Sambo. It is seen all of the time because of how effective it is. This video will be discussing the arm bar. This is an attack focused on isolating the elbow joint and applying forces to hyperextend, bend backwards, the elbow joint. In this video, we will talk about the anatomy involved, how the arm bar is performed, the potential injuries, and a little discussion of recovery from these injuries. I will be getting a little orthopedic surgeon nerdy, but bear with me. If you enjoy this video, please give me some external validation and do all of the things at the bottom corner. Thanks. The three bones that make up the elbow joint are the humerus, radius, and ulna. The three bones join together in a fairly complicated fashion. The humerus and ulna make a hinge joint. They allow the elbow to flex and extend. The joint between the humerus and the radius is one of rotation that allows for supination and pronation as the radius rotates around the ulna. The radius and the ulna also have joints, one at the elbow, a proximal radio ulnar joint or PRUJ, and the other down by the wrist. The ulna provides fairly good bone support to the back of the hinge joint. This means that it is pretty hard for the ulna to go forward in relation to the humerus. If there's going to be a dislocation, it is usually backward. Ligaments help keep the elbow from dislocating where there is no bone support, but they are usually not as strong as the bone. This is important when it comes to application of the arm bar. Then there are a bunch of muscles and their tendons that cross the elbow joint and help in its movement and somewhat with stability. These include the biceps and the brachialis, which help flex the elbow. The biceps is also the main supinator of the forearm. There's the triceps, which is the main extender of the elbow. Then there are the wrist and a few finger flexors and extensors that are on either side of the elbow. A brief aside, you probably all have heard of tennis elbow or golfer's elbow. These are issues with the tendons at the elbow of muscles that then go to the wrist. Tennis elbow with the extensors and golfer's elbow with the flexors. The arm bar submission is applied by securing your opponent's arm above and below the elbow. This is often done by holding the forearm wrist with your own arms and having the upper arm secured in part by your legs. The combination of securing the forearm, immobilizing the upper arm, and then elevating your hips causes significant forces to go through the elbow joint. This is all very important when keeping the anatomy in mind. When applying the arm bar, the ulna and radius are being hinged backward while the humerus is going forward. This is stressing the weaker ligaments and tendons that are in front and the sides of the elbow. A subtlety that is often emphasized when properly performing an arm bar is that the person's thumb should be pointing in the direction you are trying to hyperextend their elbow. This position of the thumb is called the neutral position as compared to full supination or pronation. If their thumb turns, as is common with armbar escapes such as the hitchhiker escape, the forces of the submission become dispersed and have less effect. I believe this is at least partially explained by looking at the proximal radial ulnar joint, or PRUJ that I mentioned earlier. The PRUJ of an extended elbow will see the most forces when the forearm is in neutral. While there is not a definitive study that describes the exact injuries that happen, there is some good information on what can happen. For example, one small study that included MRIs of five Brazilian Jiu Jitsu competitors who had been armbarred showed that all five had injuries to the inside of the elbow with the common flexor tendons and as well at least a partial injury to the ulnar collateral ligament. There was also presence of bone contusions or even microfractures in the distal humerus and olecranon in three out of five of these competitors. The elbow joint can clearly be dislocated as demonstrated by Ronda Rousey. And with Frank Mir and Tim Sylvia, 
the forearm bones can break too. As you can see, most structures at the elbow are at risk of injury with the arm bar. I will not get into the details of recovering for each possible injury because as we just discussed, there could be tendon injuries, ligament injuries, and or fractures from an armbar attack. Recovery is based on the specific structures injured and the severity. A dislocation will be very different from a sprain, which is very different from a broken bone. One thing that I will point out about elbows is that when they are injured, the elbow wants to get stiff. For this reason, we will rarely immobilize the elbow for more than two weeks. Motion is very important for the elbow joint. As always, with any injury, be evaluated by a medical professional. And on that note, let's keep moving. See my next video on the injury that Jacare Souza sustained at UFC 262.